I'm here today with um, Ed and Caroline McVeigh. Um, they're the owners of the Wheel Specialists in Ribble Valley. Welcome, Ed and Caroline. How are you? Hello, mate. We're fine. Thank you very yeah, much. Very good. Thank you. Good. Looking forward to having a good chat with you. So tell us a little bit about the Wheel Specialists in Ribble Valley. What's it all about and how long have you been going? Uh, well, we, we've been open uh, for about two and a half years now. Uh, we set up five weeks before COVID hit. Uh, it's been going really well so far. Yeah. Uh, we've exceeded our expectations in every way. Really. Yeah, it has. It has. Uh, we had another business before it, uh, tied that up because we wanted to do something different that gave us a bit more flexibility in life and uh, was a bit better for the long-term future. So we decided to do this, didn't we? Yeah. So when you, when you say it's ex exceeded expectations, what did you expect and what did you get? Uh, so, well, I thought that we'd be sort of all right, you know, I mean, we're in the River Valley, it's a fairly quiet area, it's not like a lot of the wheel specialists, you know, that are in the centre of Nottingham or Manchester or Glasgow and, you know, various places around the UK, you know, we're in quite a, quite an out of the way, yeah. quiet rural. place, yeah, rural <laughs> area, uh, so we were expecting it to do all right, but never sort of hit up there with the big boys and what they're turning over. Uh, and yet two months ago, out of all the franchises, which are currently running over 26, we were number six uh, in September. So yeah, that was not far, you know, we've worked at it. We had a little hard. celebration. <laughs> Brilliant, congratulations. That's amazing in uh, two and a half years, isn't it? Especially it is. with, yeah, it does. Especially with the first like 18 months of that two and a half years being COVID hit. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was a, it was a worry when COVID hit. We'd like I said, we've been on for five weeks. Um, yeah. How did yeah that go? We, well, it was hard work, wasn't it? We had to furlough two lads that had working for us. Um, Ed continued to come in because because we had to shut down completely because we didn't have much trade work on board because we hadn't been long up long enough yeah. to get out there and get it. We just had one trader in particular that luckily was doing some insurance work. So you came in and just kept, you know, kept the ball rolling with that. Um, but yeah, it was difficult. I was working from home with a young baby at the time as well. Um, so just trying to still follow up on those leads, you know, keep a list of who'd spawn up as soon as we were back up and running. And but yeah, it was a stress because we haven't been open long enough to get any big grants or anything like that. And it's just like, when you put your life into a business, literally we had put our life savings into this. Um, it was quite a stress, but yeah, we just, we worked hard with it. And as soon as things reopened, we were on it. <laughs> we're, yeah, uh, during the five weeks, sorry, the time we were shut due to COVID, uh, I, because it's very technical, uh, the process and everything we're doing here, there's a lot to learn. Uh, I just carried on doing it day in and day out, just to perfect it to get better at it. So when um, we were opening full time properly, when COVID had relaxed and we were getting sort of getting back to normal, we were in the best position to be able to serve our customers the best and, and just do the best work we possibly could. So yeah, there was uh, quite a few days when we didn't have any work on, but I still came in to try and refine everything uh, on the shop floor and the processes. So you made good use of the time, and then when when you were able to start trading properly, the desire was maximised to get things back on track. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we opened uh, when we could do, and we didn't really need to advertise that much because we just had people wanting to come and use us. Yeah. In all fairness, people have been kept inside and stopped from spending money for a bit, so we capitalised on it because yeah. uh, people wanted to come and go out and the sun, you know, it was nice weather at the time when COVID yeah, had lifted and the sun was out and people wanted to get the cars done because they had a bit of extra spending money and so we rolled on from there and it's not, really stopped rolling yeah. in North fairness for the last sort of two years. So what type of customers are you uh, dealing with at the moment? We deal with everything. So our split at the moment is probably actually 50-50, 50% to public, 50% trade. Um, this time, 12 months ago, we were probably more like a 35-65 split. Um, but yeah, we worked on trying to get the public so we can get it more at an even level with the two of them. 
Okay. But yeah, I mean, they come from all our territory area is actually um, the Burnley area. So our territory is actually Burnley, Clitheroe, Blackburn, Preston, um, Skipton. Um, so we cover quite a wide area. And of course, to begin with, we try to get the traders around here on board, but then we've really, really concentrated over the last 12 months and doing it more on a wider scale and getting yeah. those people further afield on board as well. Great. Which well, it out much. Good. So um, what would you say differentiates you from other potential solutions that the public or the trade might have? Well, uh, I mean, we do everything that's per the manufacturer. So you come and you bring your BMW in uh, and you want to damn cut wheel doing, uh, we'll do it. And it will look like, to some degree, I mean, obviously depending on damage and stuff like that, but let's just say you use a standard wheel and you've not got anything to know, it's like driven over for certain dysfunction. It will look like, Pretty much like it came out of the showroom. It'll be a shiny, it'll be as well finished, it'll be absolutely, uh, you know, and people really can't tell. Uh, most of the time, we lose even getting furbished because we do so much, uh, we put so much effort into it, and the quality of what we do is absolutely second to none. Yeah. You know, we get a lot of wheels coming in that have been refurbished previously, or I you know, been done by somebody else, and we're happy with it, and we bring it to us, and we get wheels which are. 30, 40 years old that we've got a refurbished yeah, we try to make it as good as we can. Uh, we just had our sides uh, to the very top of the market, very close to the standards, and our turnaround time is very quick as well. So, for example, when I set our foot in fields, we can turn around the same day. So, if somebody rolled a bit of two of us out, sort of made a coffee in the morning, dropped it off, and you need it the same day, it's possible to strip them and be power coat them all in uh, sort of eight hours. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're not trying to do that all the time because otherwise we'd have to run out of our feet. We usually say so two days. Uh, so. But when people are desperate, we can, yeah. we can do it for them. Yeah, and traders as well. We have traders coming to the floor and they miss something. So we work closely with them and show them to be on Something might be missed and the car's getting picked up and you have to do that. You know, four or five o'clock, they missed and it's lunchtime and it's a damn good wheel. We have turned the wheels around them like that in you know, three hours for them, and we did it on the two weeks ago. Uh, and their customer was absolutely on the moon, you know, that we managed to do So it's really sort of quality in our company, how professional. And the fact that we do give a workmanship guarantee, we're that sure on what we are doing. Um, we offer workmanship guarantees for 12 months with your powder coated wheels and six wheels with six months with your diamond cut wheels, um, which is something that a lot of companies wouldn't. So, uh, so tell us about the uh, the future. What does that look like? What what challenges have you got looking forward? <laughs> well, we are constantly trying to get more work on board. Uh, I don't pick our lever. Not try and do that, regardless of however how busy we get. Uh, but we're always investing in new machinery, uh, looking into new ways to try and refine the process and to speed things up uh, or to improve quality uh, where it's possible. Or you know, new powders and new methods. We've invested uh, even in the short time we've been open. We've invested in a couple of new bits of kit uh, rather than just saving money for a rainy day. Uh, potentially, you never straight know what's going to happen. We put it straight back into the business. Uh, to try and help things you know, and speed things up a little bit. Uh, I think given just trying to move forward, we, costs are going up at the moment, yeah. you know, like electricity has gone through the roof. Uh, so I suppose our biggest thing is just trying to manage the outgoings of the business while still maintaining our, uh, our quality and then bring extra work, yeah. uh, which we constantly do. We have a sales guy coming for us uh, a couple of times a year to go out on the road uh, to try and draw up new work and then to, <coughs> to bring it in for us because we're always looking for that next trade, uh, trade account on board. Uh, and little by little, just build it all and continue to do so uh, for the, for the future. future. Yeah. Great. So, um, obviously, you've had two and a half years, you've had COVID, you've had a new business, you've uh, <laughs> babies, <laughs> knowledge, babies, <laughs> yeah. moving house, you told me about earlier as well. So uh, what, what have been the learnings for you along the way? 
gosh, learnings. Um, I mean, I've been in business before, but this still has been a big learning curve for me. Um, I mean, the learning, it's right from the offset. It's all about, it. for us, we hadn't come from an automotive background. Um, I mean, Ed's an ex-Marine, ex-engineer, ex-Marine. I used to run a chauffeur company, so we knew about vehicles, but everything to do with this job has been, we've had to learn it from scratch. So for me being on the office side, I've had a brand new CRM system to learn about. Um, the bookkeeping has been, it's been different to what I've done before. Um, I know it's part of and everything that comes with it, it's set the other process we do, uh, and just to run the business efficiently. And then there's also been a learning of, as much as you integrate yourself, like I do in the shop floor every day, uh, you can get a bit carried away with that and looking too much into the process and uh, being part of it as opposed to being a business owner and then taking a step back from that. So you can actually have a, a look at the overall business, which is what we've been doing uh, more of recently to see how we can really expand and grow. Uh, 12 months ago, uh, we weren't in a position to do that. And certainly uh, in my head, we weren't ready to do that because I was constantly on the shop floor all the time uh, within it. But yeah, I suppose. Well, it sounds like you're making a great transition and uh, a great success of it. So well done and thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.